today we are making a uh, pan de casericio, which is the Mac 1 version. I've got another version, which I'll teach later on. But this was my favorite bread. This was my version of when everybody else came to me and he said, I work in a bakery, I own a bakery. They'd always say, oh, do you make sourdough? I love sourdough. And I used to think, have you tried this? If you try this, you will love it. This puts sourdough to shame and it's really simple to make. So let's get on with it. First of all, last night we made a bigger, which is now looking nice and right. Bring that up. So you can see the nice bubbles in there. To make the beaker, we're gonna take 442 grams of water, then add 1.1 grams of yeast to it. Then we're gonna get our whisk, give it a whisky whisk. Let's break down all the yeast. Now this is gonna take 12 to 18 hours um, left out of room temperature. Give that a whisk, done. Right, now water into the flour. And we have got in here 495 grams of double zero flour, which is the same flour we're going to make the rest of the recipe with. So we're just going to give this a, a stir. Look at that lovely, lovely mixture coming together. It smells amazing. It's not even fermented yet. And when it comes together like this, after what, a minute? Maybe a minute and a half? And you start seeing no lumps. Or very few lumps. We go, right, that's enough. Pop that in there, like that. Now, the reason why we add the yeast to the water and not the flour to the water and then add the yeast later, the reason we whisk it in is because otherwise you will get one lump of yeast at the top there where the bulk of it has stayed together. And uh, yeah, it means that you're, it's not, it's not really even mixture. You're not giving, you're going to have the same recipe each time. So, there you go. We're just going to cover that, leave it overnight, 12 to 18 hours, ambient. If it starts peaking before it's ready, you can always put it in the fridge for uh, however long you need just to slow it down a little bit. So we don't want to hang around, you can see it's starting to collapse. 750 grams of double zero flour. The yeast. We want five grams of yeast. The salt. 25 grams. Now that seems quite high, but when you bear in mind that we've got um, a lot of bigger in there, it actually does work out at more at the a standard 2%. Um, this water's been left in the fridge, it's 7.5 degrees. Let's go. So we need 420 grams to start with. That can go straight in there. May collapse, but that's absolutely fine. It's going to all go in the dough in a moment. And then we're going to add another 66 grams on the side. Um, lastly, let's take our oil. We want 23 grams of oil. Now, that is just enough to give it, um, to change the colour of the crumb to a more golden shape and the crust to a more golden shape. So it's the flour, the salt, the yeast, the water, first water at least, all into that beaker. We've kept the second water, we've kept the olive oil on the side. Now this is quite a big mix. This is the biggest mix we've made so far. And uh, the reason for that is this is gonna make two, or it's gonna make one and a little bit of something else. Okay, onto the table we go. So there is bits of flour in here. There is probably some moister bits as well. You can sort of see there's a little river going down that part, but that's all right. It's gonna all get absorbed now. At least it's in a block that's not gonna end up with water running down the table um, and escaping the rest of the mix. So now I'm just gonna lift, I don't want the flour to go everywhere. So I'm just kind of folding it over. 
And hey, you could probably get a bit more technical with this, but I'm just chucking the dough around, you know? Folding it over, putting wet bits where dry bits are. Um, you can feel it in, in my fingers still that it's still quite uneven, um, but that's fine. This is all part of the, what the process. And actually, if you were to use a mixer for this, it may be a little bit uniform in that I've had many mixers that I've used they kind of mix the same a bit of dough, so they leave that bit that is stuck on the outside um, until later on it gets incorporated. Um, so this is the beauty of hand kneading and the fact that you can just see a problem whilst kneading and just go and fix it. Bit of flour there, let's rub it in. Bit of flour there, yeah? Bit of flour. Okay, that is incorporated now. So, you know what? I'm going to chuck it back in the bowl. And it can do a little bit of the work in the fridge. Okay, okay, so we've allowed the dough to develop on its own in the fridge, so it's kind of like auto lazy, really. Uh, we just allowed the salt to go in. Now we're going to, it's nice and strong, so, which is one of the reasons why I did that, because it was that strong. Um, just going to set our timer now, um, and just slowly knead it, really gradually incorporate all the ingredients. We want to try and create a really strong dough. So that's the slow period brunt work all done. Now we're going to put it back in the fridge to rest for 15 minutes to continue its slow fermentation and then we're going to bring it back on the table and knead hard for 10 minutes. So after 15 minutes it goes back out onto the table We're going to start fast mixing now. Okay, so we're going to add our last drop of water into there. So it adds our last bit of water now. Just only a little bit. But do just enough to disrupt the structure a little bit. And uh, plenty of times when I first started baking I thought this is a big mistake. What have I done? any of the water ever going to go in it. But it does, it does, it gets there. Sometimes it takes longer than others, depending on how strong the dough is already, but it does work. Knead it, so it starts holding together a little bit more. Shouldn't take long. So I'm kneading it so it starts to take shape together again. Shouldn't take long. and in with the olive oil. Just to make sure everything from the outside of the bowl, all the oil is incorporated. I'm just gonna scrape it with it, with the dough inside. So now it's all in the dough, just need to mix it, knead it, so I'm going to 
see that. Okay, so that's it now. So we now need it to build up some more, to relax, build up some strength. And to do that, we're going to leave it in the bowl. Okay, so the dough's now been left for an hour to rest in the fridge. So we're gonna take it out. There we go. And we're gonna do a stretch and fold. So let's take this out. And then once we're finished, we're gonna pop it into this bowl here, which is dusted, so it's gonna be a little bit easier just to, to get it out at the end. Let's pull, stretch. Okay, so next up, we've now allowed this to rest for one hour in the fridge, giving it a turn, then another hour in the fridge. So now's the time we're gonna give it one last turn on the table and then leave it there for about 20 minutes to half an hour um, before we then start dividing it into, and making it to the, the final proof shape that we want. So on this goes. on a floured surface. We're gonna leave it to rest over there. And so pull out, and fold, and fold. Okay, easy as you like. That's a really nice soft dough. So we're just gonna pop that on the side there and leave that, I think 20 minutes would be absolutely fine for that because it's almost ready. Um, and then we can start making our breads from it. And uh, yeah, there's gonna be a bit of a twist. It's not just a normal bread that we're gonna make. It's gonna be three different types of bread. <clears throat> okay, so the next part, after we've left it to rest for 20 minutes, is now we need to scale it into the desired loaf size. So, first of all, we're gonna take our dough. Pop it on the bit of flour table. And then we're gonna put a bit of flour over here because that is where we're going to end up putting the dough. So, take a cut off. We're looking for one loaf. Big. For this, we're looking at about 650 grams, which is bang on that. Okay, so here we're just going to knock it out like that, fold towards us, fold like that, fold like that, and pop it on the table there. Now, this is actually the shaping of our loaf, that's all we're going to do with that. Next up, we're going to take a slice of about 800 grams. Okay. We're just going to leave it on the table. A little bit of flour on top. You'll see why in a moment. In a square. This one here. Take that off now. We're going to divide into 150, 160 grams. That's one, two. These ones here, we can just pop into a, a round. So we've got three rounds there. And for this, we're just gonna add, get our baker's peel, add some semolina all around the outside. It's gotta be wider than the dough because it will expand. 
and some flour. Probably not that much, but that'll do. And then we're just going to take our bread and pop it on like that. It will go outwards, so we want to kind of box it off to try and keep it as tight as possible. So that, my friend, is ready to prove. So we can put that to one side. And let's just get a baking sheet and drizzle it in some olive oil. This is just to stop anything sticking to it. You could, if you wanted to, just use a baking sheet and you could, again, just not bake it at all. But actually, adding a bit of oil at the bottom does kind of give it a little bit of a um, crispy bottom, which is uh, quite cool for this type of bread. Uh, next up, that can go to one side. Now, we're going to stretch this out. You could use a rolling pin if you wanted to. Nothing stopping you doing that. But I'm just going to try and stretch this out as best I can using what we've got. It's a strong dough, so it'll be able to withstand most things. Okay. So I've just moved it over to this side because there's just a little bit more flour on that surface and I don't really want to be using more flour and get my surface even more dirty. So that is good, yeah? Right, for this one we're going to add some tomatoes. We'll leave a gap at the edge. Then we can add some pesto. This is nice rustic homemade pesto. It's very, very strong. And then some hard cheese. Now you could use mozzarella if you can get the hard stuff. Um, or in this case we've got gria. You could potentially use uh, gouda. It's many choices available. If anything too soft and it may burn and melt and ruin your bread. So I'm just going to put some semolina down over here. Right, are we ready? Okay, so we're going to take it here. This one, this edge here is slightly wider. It's slightly thicker, that, that edge. Um, that's not a problem, that's what we want, okay? So that's gonna be where we're folding it over. So this is gonna come towards me, and I'm gonna roll it over. So fold over there, like that. Keep going, keep going, and now it's supporting itself. And as you can see, the toppings, the toppings are moving up. And it naturally, so it's a good job we have that ridge there, because when it gets to here, very, very close. So that would go like that. Okay, just at the side, we're just gonna tuck that in a little bit. And that is good. Okay, so now we're gonna chuck it over here. And then we're just gonna roll it in the semolina just to give the coating a nice little bit of crunch on the outside. Uh, and that's it there. Okay, so next up, we've got our tray. And now we're just gonna make some incisions, cut it for our bread. Like that. Like that. Okay, and over here we're just going to try and open that one there that's on the edge. Same as that one there. That one there, that one's not got much cheese, that one's got loads. Bit of tomato. That's good. Right, this appears we've got baker's dozen there, so I'll get another tray, I'll pop that on, and that'll be a spare one for later on. We're just going to leave these to relax for about 15 minutes, and then we'll put them in the oven. Okay, for this one, we're just going to use a baking sheet, some greaseproof paper, 
Um, take our dough and just stretch it out like that. This one here, I'm going to add a little bit of uh, mascarpone, probably too much. Just going to put a couple of pine nuts on top. And the other one, I've just got some spare olives here, so I'm just going to pop them in. And the opportunities for doing either of these things with uh, the past couple of breads that we've made, so the round that we just made, um, or for this one, you can put anything you want on there, there's so much possibility. Um, it really, you can be imaginative, you can put a bit of this and that, you can use mozzarella, you can make mini pizzas, there's so much scope to do what you want. You can even make sweet ones, put chocolate in it, you can put bacon on it, whatever you wanted to do, uh, there's so much option. So um, I hope we've given you some insight now. We're going to bake the first lot in the oven um, and, then we'll come, and then I'll put these ones in as well afterwards. To get this dough ready to go in the oven, First of all, just to make sure we don't have any problems with it once we slide it in, I'm just going to run our, our dough scraper underneath and just check it will wobble on. There we go. Right, next up, we're going to flour dust it. Doesn't have to be perfect, a bit of irregularity is pretty good, yeah? Next up, that's almost ready to go in. So, what I'm going to do is make sure I've got my water ready to. Then I'm going to make my cuts. So that's one, two, three, four. If you get a little bit like that, don't worry too much. You can try and straighten it up if you want to. Don't faff about too much though, because it will spring up and you might even make it worse by playing around with it. So there it is. Now let's take this over to the oven and I'll show you how we drop it in. Okay, so open the door, and then we're just gonna sort of jimmy it on like that, slide it in, and give it a little tap there, just to straighten that edge up. It won't do all four sides though, just that one. Uh, then we're gonna pour some water on our dough at the bottom. A nice amount of water, and that'll help create the steam, which is gonna help support the loaf rise in the oven, which we call the oven spring. Not only that, it will help give us a nice crunchy crust, which combined with adding a little bit of water as well to the side of the oven in a spray, which we'll do now. And we'll do the other side of the oven. Try not to spray the stone, try not to spray, spray the light or the glass at the same time. We wait another 30 seconds. So that's plenty of steam in there. And now we're going to just turn the heat down to 220. Sorry, 230 for this. And we'll leave it like that for around 15 minutes and then we'll check up, see how the bread's getting on, whether we need to adjust the oven setting, which is quite common, um, or leave it as it is. Okay, as you can see, the bread is nicely baking in that oven. I'm not seeing any overcoloration. It is looking lovely in there. Um, so we're going to leave it in there, give it another probably 12 minutes, um, and then check back on it. So that would be 27 minutes, just coming up to half an hour. Um, and then it could be then a case for dropping the heat down. Um, if not, we'll just keep going. Um, and it, we want to aim for a 35 minute loaf, 30, 40 minute loaf max, and that should be perfect for us. 
So you'll hopefully be able to see that the dough now has taken on a nice golden colour. So I'm just going to open this up with my peel. And just give it a little turn. Allow the air, the steam to release. We'll also aid in the uh, crust formation just uh, to release it. And yeah, I think we'll give that. So yeah, we'll give that another five minutes in the oven and that'll be happy. Everyone's, da everyone's a winner. So we'll just give it another five to seven minutes in the oven. I'm happy with that. No need to change the oven. We'll be back in five to seven minutes. And here we go. You can see the bread's now got a nice dark color to it. Let's take that out. Oh, it's gonna be good. Yes, we've got golden, we've got darkness, we've got black, we've got lightness. It's a good contour of colours, a good contrast. So at that comes, we'll allow it to cool. Turn the oven off for the night. So at that comes, we'll allow it to cool. And then uh, I'll show you what it looks like when it's cut in a few hours. About halfway through, um, I bake these at I bake these at two I bake these at 220 degrees. About halfway through, I decided to turn the bottom heat off and do top and bottom heat on the oven, and that just helped the tops bake. Um, See, so yeah, we have this nice colour texture on top. Um, I took these out just using the peel. Um, that was on a tray, that's nice and simple. Left it on the tray for two minutes and then uh, picked them up and put them on the uh, cooling rack. You could use a um, pallet knife or even your dough scraper to get underneath just to scrape them up because they can be really hot with that oil that we put on underneath. Now, to finish them off, I added a tiny bit of spinach that was just chopped off around the outside of these. Also, if we wanted to, we could add a little bit of oil on top. Um, so, for example, this one here and that one there and when it goes onto the crust nice solid crust they feel nice and sturdy you could sell them quite easily at a market um, or in a shop really really easy really really simple wasn't it let me know how you get on in the comments below